Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation to participate, and thank you all for staying uh, for the last discussion. So I'll just uh, follow along with what Dr. Uh, Pro just discussed, uh, who gave a very eloquent and comprehensive review of the merit of transplant, both autologous and also allogeneic, for managing relapsed peripheral T cell lymphoma. Um, as you know, there's only a selected a portion of T cell lymphoma patients who are capable of moving on to transplant and um, benefit from the uh, uh, intensive therapy uh, efficacy. And in our practice, we know too often that the majority of our T cell patients, uh, especially those relapse patients, either absolutely cannot move on due to active uh, progressive disease or incapable because of comorbidity or personal preference. So the, in those particular cases, uh, novel therapy um, options are very important. And so this part of discussion will go over those. Um, and also just keep in mind that um, m most of the talk would be based on phase two study, uh, which is obviously only including patients who's uh, not, not being transplanted for their outcomes, and we really just don't have phase three data like PARMA study in B-cell lymphoma where you have relatively unbiased uh, survival outcome comparing transplant versus non-transplant. Um, so um, I, I also want to start very briefly with a patient case study. Uh, we, we saw a patient when she was only 60, uh, initial presentation was uh, fatigue, weight loss, and also a lymphadenopathy, and lymph node biopsy showed angioimmunoblastic T-cell lymphoma, and bone marrow was positive, so she had stage four disease, IPI of three, and she told us that she wants the best treatment, and she's not interested in transplant uh, from the, the get-go, so she received six cycles of CHOP chemo, achieved CR, and uh, um, afterwards she opted against um, a consolidative autologous stem cell transplant and was observed, um, uh, uh, you know, closely. So five years later, now she's 65 and, and became once again symptomatic, uh, having symptoms of sore throat and difficulty swallowing, had a scan which showed a mass as a tongue base and a additional other lymphadenopathy biopsy was consistent to recurrent angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma. So the, the context is that a relapsed patient has 65 who is not interested in intensive therapy. So the goal would be looking at uh, sequencing um, um, treatment, uh, including novel therapy to provide optimal management. and. Um, so what are the evidence and data out there as part of a guidance for that? Um, as what Dr. Pro mentioned that T cell lymphoma generally are managed or modeled after uh, B cell uh, lymphoma therapy. The outcome, however, remains suboptimal in terms of progression-free survival and overall survival. Relapse cases are very common and um, which is, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's showing here uh, where across the board for a different subtype of uh, peripheral T cell lymphoma, with the exception, with the exception of ALK positive ALCL, uh, the overall outcome um, is much poorer compared with B cell non Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, for the most common, um, more common subtypes of PTCL NOS or AITL, the uh, five-year overall survival was on average at 30%, and s certainly they're stratified by IPI score with higher score with less uh, favorable outcome and less common one, including a ATLL, enteropathy-associated T-cell lymphoma or hepatosplenic subtypes having even uh, less favorable long-term survival uh, outcomes. So just to review, you have seen s some of the data uh, earlier that for patients who have um, relapse disease, historical data uh, based on the uh, British Columbia Cancer Registry uh, where uh, patients are followed, uh, 191 patients, uh, their outcome following relapse for transplant uh, ineligible patient, which were 153 of those patients, the outcome uh, for progression-free survival and median survival is fairly dismal. Uh, PFS was only three months and uh, overall survival less than six months. Um, importantly, the uh, traditional 
chemotherapy, which is shown in panel two, did not seem to add significant or durable impact on progression-free survival and overall survival. So that certainly present greater challenge, but also a lot of opportunity to come up with new treatment options. And in the past decade, perhaps more so in the five, last five years, um, certainly there's a lot of activity in terms of treatment options for T-cell lymphoma patient. And uh, in fact, there are five, uh, four compounds that are FDA approved in settings of relapse uh, T-cell lymphoma, including antifolate, uh, prilotrexate, uh, HDAC inhibitor, romadepsin first, and now we have blenostat as well as antibody drug conjugate, uh, brentuximab. Interestingly, uh, to contrast with the uh, traditional chemotherapy or single agent uh, chemotherapy, um, gemcitabine or newcomer such as bendamustin, the uh, biologics or novel treatment options seems to have moderate uh, response rate, but they distinguish themselves with more durability for those responders. So you see that you know the uh, duration response was uh, anywhere from eight to 28 months uh, for those who actually can have uh, a, a meaningful response. And that's contrasting to uh, chemotherapy backbone-based salvage, where you might express, uh, expect higher response rate, but generally non-durable if they don't, do not move on to additional intensification, um, because either development of resistant disease or just simply cannot uh, continue with additional therapy due to uh, dose-limiting toxicities. Um, additional newer compounds obviously are continue to be explored, and they're including a, a immunomodulatory compound such as lenalidomide and also anti-CCR4 antibody uh, mogamulizumab, uh, which are now approved in Japan for treatment of relapsed ATLL. Um, so this is just a composite cartoon in a simplistic way presenting what are potential targets of those novel compound. Uh, we talked about anti-surface molecule in the form of antibodies, such as anti-CCR4, antibody drug conjugate, represented by brentuximab vitotin, and intracellular target, you have uh, antifolate, uh, prilotrexate, and also epigenetic modifier, which obviously modifies transcriptional outcome. Those were romadepsin and blenostat, and uh, um, certainly additional uh, target against microenvironment uh, would include uh, lenalidomide. This also kind of provides clues as to what are potential combinations later on for those novel compounds uh, to maximize their uh, synergy, but also not to add to overlapping toxicity. Um, so in the interest of time, very briefly, just as a review of the highlights of those novel agents, starting with the first compound, prilotrexate, which is a antimetabolite, specifically antifolate. Um, it's given once weekly for six weeks in a row and then one week break for a seven week treatment cycle. And in the registration trial, 109 patients were treated, including many different subtypes of T-cell lymphoma. And the uh, overall response rate was registered at 29% with 11% CR rate. Duration response was around 10 months. And toxicities include mucositis and myelosuppression. The uh, next compound approved is the HDAC inhibitor a specifically class one uh, selective HDAC inhibitor, romadepsin. It's also a IV medication that goes in once weekly for three weeks in a row with one week break for a four week treatment cycle. Um, the infusion is uh, relatively intensive involving four hours of infusion and the response rate registered uh, at 25% overall and 15% CR rate. Duration response initial report was 17 months, but recent update included patients who had uh, durable response up to over two years, which is quite impressive for single agent um, biologics. The common AEs included uh, myelosuppression and also infection in a rather susceptible patient population. Um, 
And to contrast the two HDAC inhibitors, romodepsin and blinostat, which recently approved, uh, blinostat is more uh, uh, less selective in uh, targeting class one and two a, uh, histone deacetylase, and it's given. Um, daily for five days and repeating every three weeks as treatment cycle. And compared to um, romodepsin, the myelosuppression appears to be uh, more, uh, le less or more modest. And uh, additional study that's in combination with uh, CHOP-like uh, chemotherapies is, is planned to test balonostat in frontline settings. And as you can also see here, the um, the uh, tre treatment response uh, seems to be rather similar uh, across the board, about 26% overall response rate, 10% CR. But in uh, angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma subtype, there might be indications or at least signals to show additional sensitivity with increased overall response. Um, certainly, additional uh, application clinical practice and additional data are needed. To, uh, to have more uh, understanding of those um, and, and com contrast between the two. So uh, the uh, antibody drug conjugates, uh, brantuximab, map, vitotin, uh, are, it must be very well uh, known or being applied uh, fairly extensively in your practice. Um, so in, in the T cell uh, context, um, it's a uh, approved for the CD30 positive ALCL relapse settings, and mechanism of action is illustrated here, which obviously utilize uh, conjugation to a antimicrobial toxin, MMAE, which selectively deployed once the antibody drug conjugates are uh, com binding to its target. And to minimize uh, uh, side effects in other uh, cell, cell types, and the studies uh, for this particular novel agent included the initial phase two registration study in systemic ALCL, and where uh, 58 patients were treated. Uh, it was given at 1.8 milligram per uh, kilogram, um, and it's very simple infusion over 30 minutes, cycles every three weeks. And um, the overall response rate was very impressive at 86%, with 57% of CR rate. And duration for those patients with um, uh, response were fairly extensive and was not even reached at the time of uh, reporting. And, um, and additional studies uh, recently came out also for uh, non-systemic ALCL. So that's including all comers for uh, T cell lymphoma uh, with, with CD30 expression. So a uh, phase two study was recently published where, where uh, two subtypes of P uh, T cell lymphoma patients were included, angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma and also PTCL NOS. A total of 35 patients included for analysis, and CD30 expression in those tumor sample at central review seems to uh, have a wide range, and in fact, they were patients who have minimum CD30 expression. Um, independent of that, the overall response rate in all patients were 41% with um, uh, CR registered. And in sub uh, subset of angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma, the overall response rate seems to be higher at 54%, and progression free survival medium was over seven months. So, uh, safety data was very similar to what you would expect with uh, brentuximab, vedotin, and other uh, disease categories. So, this certainly uh, become a useful uh, single agent uh, with modest. Uh, toxicity profile to be considered for patients with relapsed T cell lymphoma. A, a couple of newer agents um, to move along the anti CCR4 antibody. Um, and as you know, CCR4 was expressed in uh, correlating with poor outcomes in peripheral T cell lymphoma as well as cutaneous T cell lymphoma, CCR4 is particularly abundant in subtype of ATLL, and there, therefore it becomes the first subtype to be experimented with the uh, antibody. And uh, the medication was given IV intravenously once weekly for eight weeks for treatment course, 
And in the uh, initial study for ATLL relapsed refractory case, 28 patients were included, and a overall response rate of 50% was registered with a fairly impressive CR at 31%. Although it's a relatively small study for a very rare uh, disease condition, the median progression-free survival was registered at five months with overall survival 13.7 months, which is, you know, generally speaking, fairly impressive for a very aggressive very poor clinical outcome disease entity. The uh, adverse events for this particular uh, antibody included infusion reactions and skin rash. And uh, as you know now, it's approved in Japan for relapsed ATLL, but available in clinical trial settings for relapsed PTCL and also CTCL uh, here. Preliminary result seems to suggest activity with overall response rate in the range of 30% and also a fair amount of CR at 14%. Um, and the most recent uh, ASH reported the uh, selective oral uh, PI3 kinase uh, gamma delta inhibitor uh, Duvalisib, which we also know as IPI145, and its data on the T cell lymphoma patients preliminarily became available, and those are based on phase one dose escalation plus expansion study uh, with compound um, given at up to 75 milligram twice daily on a continuous base as tolerated. And as you can see here, included a variety, this particular study included a variety of T-cell lymphoma subtypes, I'm not very good using this, um, including um, uh, obviously common type of AITL, uh, PTCL NOS, but also more rare type uh, such as enteropathy associated T-cell lymphoma uh, and um, uh, others. So the uh, response rate was registered at 42 percent uh, with 6 percent CR rate. And in systemic uh, PTCL, the median progression-free survival was eight, over eight months, which uh, is quite respectable and uh, uh, relatively early study at this stage, but uh, uh, something uh, to watch out for. And clearly, those novel compound in clinical trial uh, face would become available if you encourage your patient to consider and participate in clinical studies. Um, so in the interest of time, this is just listing uh, and remains to be rather incomplete list of other potential promising novel drugs, either as single agent or in combinations uh, for application in the setting of relapsed T-cell lymphoma. Um, and as you can see here, we talked quite a few compounds already and uh, but not being elaborated, included the uh, Aurora kinase inhibitor, which we discussed during B cell sections, and also combinations of those uh, single agent that we just reviewed, um, as well as others, including uh, proteasome inhibitor and um, ibrutinib, which we now use fairly commonly in B cell lymphoma, but certainly a cross react with the tech. Um, kinase uh, inhibition, which are in operation in T-cell lymphoma. So certainly there's greater opportunity and potential, and I think we're eagerly await for many ongoing studies to result. So going back to the patient case to conclude that this patient um, certainly, again, wants the optimal treatment, shy of intense in, in, intensive uh, treatment option of transplant and going with very conservative option. Initially, we provided DICE salvage chemotherapy for three cycles. She achieved PR and lived with it for a little while, subsequently received pilotrexate for three cycles, reasonably well tolerated, eventually had uh, imaging-based progression of disease, and subsequently enrolled with much persuasion in the SWOG 11 phase two study testing single oral compound elicitib. She achieved CR after six cycles of treatment, however, voluntarily discontinued treatment due to adverse event of diarrhea, mucositis, and alopecia, which goes against her uh, quality of life criteria. And she remained um, in uh, disease remission up until six months later and developed additional symptoms and uh, imaging relapse, at which point a single agent gemcitabine was applied and 
had disease control for about eight months, Val Kate following that for about four months, and currently continuing on romadepsin as a single agent and with a fa fairly well toler tolerate tolerated course and remains active as outpatient and reasonable quality of life. So this certainly is not a generalization of all the T-cell lymphoma patients we would see in clinic. In fact, most of them may have more aggressive disease. But just an example of how single agent or combinations or clinical trials could become useful and of benefit uh, for patients in relapse settings. Um, and certainly, this particular outcome is greatly aided by the fact that we have those availability uh, of biologics, um, such as pralotraxate or romadepsins, um, and allow patients to, in fact, have durable remission or r durable disease control in that matter. So, uh, so going back to the drawing board, as we always you know, actively doing for T-cell lymphoma, relapse disease are fairly common, and the only way to move forward is really to, uh, you know, consider trying novel therapies and also consider participating in clinical trials so that um, uh, adequate disease control can be achieved to where there are many options, whether intensive uh, uh, treatment options such as transplant versus um, continuous or maintenance option where many of those biologics hold the promise for. And, and finally, those novel agents can go back to the new, new, newly diagnosed settings to have less relapse, hopefully, eventually. Um, so the conclusion that I have for novel agents is that even though we don't have data, but compared with historical data coming out of studies such as British Columbia uh, retrospective analysis, that the uh, novel agents with uh, new mechanism of action certainly uh, provide, uh, will likely lead to improved patient outcome, including uh, survival data. Um, and cert there are many unmet needs, such as we don't have any uh, available biomarkers to really intelligently guide us to tailor biologics, novel therapy, how to sequence them. We also don't have any good phase three data to compare novel agents with conventional therapy or with uh, transplant for that matter. And uh, we also uh, should do more prospective studies to evaluate uh, novel combinations or single agents. Thank you.